Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the tank is airtight or uh, watertight. And I had a couple little bubbles that came up, but I'm taking soapy water and spraying it all over the welds. And then I've blocked off all of the openings. And I'm just putting up about five to 10 PSI inside the tank. And I look for bubbles to come up with soapy water and then I'll mark it with a Sharpie. And then any of those points that I've marked with a Sharpie, I'll go back and I'll weld over that. Okay, so I filled it up with water and I left it for about four hours and I noticed just a little bit of wetness around these two bungs and the guy who usually does the dipping for my tanks is closed because he's an unnecessary business I guess. So I just put some epoxy, two part epoxy around any of the welds along some of the things. So I'm pretty much done welding this whole entire thing. So. I don't see any issues with just kind of slopping on some goop here and you know just to kind of reinforce the welds and make sure no pinholes pop up later on. If they do I'll just patch them up again. Okay so I got gas tank on, I got all the plumbing in, here's the cutoff and the primer and the little prime thing. It was really really hard to get all of the tubing sizes that came out of this thing. I don't even know what was going on but I had to buy like 10 different sizes and then try them all out. So, But I just sprayed starter fluid in it and it is firing up. It's also uh, lighting up the indicator that says the charging unit is going and the charger is turning on. Um, I'm going to actually go to the gas station and get some gas. This holds about six gallons. Now I did buy some foam, but uh, everything's taking a long time to get here. Um, and that's just gonna be like an anti-slosh foam that's gonna drop inside to keep it stable because on a bike like this, with this big of a tank, it's gonna be super crazy. But it's going. One thing that I said in the last video, and I was pretty excited about um, the numbers I was getting. Um, and when I hooked the bike up to the charger, I noticed that this little guy, the cycle analyst this is the shunt that i was getting all my information from um it was not calibrated which super stupid of me i took it out i bought it i took it out of the box and i bolted it up and i assumed that it would be completely calibrated because every other shunt i've ever bought is nicely calibrated so it was off it was off by a lot i recalibrated i did some testing and it turns out i get 17 watt hours per mile which is not as good as five um obviously like three times worse or a little bit more so that 6,000 mile range unfortunately wasn't correct i also did an efficiency test on the charger on the wall and it was 75 percent so that means that we're back down to around 1500 miles per tank which i know is not as exciting as six but it's still pretty darn good i'm still pretty darn excited about it unfortunately i have to go back on what i said was 6,000, but you know, I can add some extra tanks on the back. That was the originally the idea anyway, was to get a couple tanks on the back to get around 10 gallons or so. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. 10 gallons would be significantly more range, probably around 2,500 miles. But I think for the most part, I'm just excited this thing runs, it functions. All right, well, let's keep going. Okay, so last night I got the bike running with the gas in the gas tank and I ran it for about 10 minutes. Everything looked really good and then I went and have some dinner, came back out and the motor was locked up. 
Um, turns out that the way I had routed my gas was allowing gas to trickle down into the motor. It filled the whole entire cylinder with gas and all the oil. And yeah, so I drained it, put new oil in it, and now I'm making a new way to run my uh, primer, the little pump thing, uh, where it's gonna come in through the lid and it's gonna dangle down into the gas, just like the original design. I don't quite understand how this works. I'm just trying to copy the design of what the original generator had. If you guys know anything about this, let me know as far as what the primer re it really is necessary for on this motor. Um, it has a main gas inlet with a filter and everything, so not sure if I need it. Um, maybe you guys can help out, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this lid, install it, and see if I can get it to run properly. After cranking the bike up, um, I started looking at it. Um, it was, there was a lot of vibration. You could see a, anything that wasn't tightened down was just rattling itself off. I did rigid mount the motor, and I think that was kind of the source of it. There's also a resonant frequency at some RPM where this thing just shakes uncontrollably. But I added some additional rubber mounts to the motor, and that significantly reduced the vibration on the bike. Now, there still is some, but it is much, much better. I'm going to take the bike out and do another test run with it. Okay, so just got back from another ride, did about 14 miles, um, and it did great. I got a new tire on it, and the whole point of this test was to really get a better idea of how many watt hours per mile it's using, um, and to also see about kind of how it performs with a little bit of gasoline in it. So on this test, uh, I had recalibrated the cycle analysts from last time, and I got about 17 watt hours per mile. Um, and with the charger going about four amps back in, that's about 250 watts back in that I can get. So uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more math and make sure it's correct this time before I claim it. We'll see, because I think we're gonna be seeing around uh, 1500 miles or so. We'll see. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. I think the next steps are I'm gonna try and get the watt hours per mile down. And I'm gonna do that by doing some aerodynamic stuff. Um, I'm gonna take the bike over to the barn. I'm gonna do some foam, fiberglass. Never done it before, so I'll bumble my way through it and uh, it'll be a good introduction so I can segue into doing some bigger stuff for land speed. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the like button. 
And go ahead and check out my website, www.larkmachineco.com. I got some hats over there for sale. So thank you so much, guys. Hey, Daisy. That is all poison oak. That is all poison oak. He's just rubbing his head in it. Oh, is that okay? That is not really. I would die if I did that.